Now listen, not all replacement musicians are hated. <laughs> there are a Occasionally, actually like a good many uh, times when a very successful band will end up recruiting a new member for one reason or another, and then they go on to have even bigger success. So on this week's Ludini Rock and Roll Circus podcast, we're going to discuss new additions to classic bands that made a huge difference. Get ready to rock out with your talk out. It's the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. everybody moms and dads boys and girls children of all ages the ludini rock and roll circus is back in town after a little bit of a hiatus we are happy to be back here um and uh, we've got uh, we got the the power trio this evening we have lily v6 from rock rage radio what's up say that again what's up okay <laughs> and then we have pittsburgh kevin from pittsburgh what's up <laughs> that doesn't mess with you guys. What's right. up, everybody? Excellent. <clears throat> um, so, welcome back, everyone. We're going to get into today's topic in a few minutes. But first, let's talk about a couple of, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, you can find out more about the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus at ludinirockandrollcircus.com and lulombardimusic.com. Why do you want to check that out? There's a lot of cool things at Lula, uh, ludinirockandrollcircus.com, including things like our YouTube archive, links to absolutely every place on the planet Earth and some of the are not on the planet earth where you may be able to listen <laughs> to um the ludini rock and roll circus uh, links to all kind of cool things including things like rock rage radio and places like that uh we have really fun and cool merch um we're gonna we we will be getting bonnieville t-shirts in the in the store um, <laughs> just kidding. But um, so yeah check it out at uh, ludini rock and roll circus.com um wolf's customs Chris Thunderwolf Dodson, uh, go there to uh, get custom paint jobs, custom artwork, etc. done on your musical instrument. Uh, we're not just talking about, you know, painting your guitar red or something like that. They, what they do is do absolutely eye-catching artwork on your musical instrument. And it just looks freaking cool, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, mm -hmm. don't you want to? One of the most important things about a guitar, Kevin and I were talking about this the yes. other day, is that you feel cool playing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and something with like cool artwork on it is going to feel like really cool. So, you, if you want to feel cool, hence, therefore, be cool. So, if you want to be cool, you want to go to wolfscustoms.online, talk mm. to Chris Thunderwolf Dodson, Rock Rage Radio. Speaking of being really cool, Rock Rage Radio is this uh, amazing app that you can download. You go to rockrageradio.com, and it's totally free. has 24-hour, totally free, awesome music uh, uh, programming. It is done in a radio station format. So uh, it's really cool to like, wow, I'm actually listening to like a really cool, uh, you know, a rock station that doesn't suck. <laughs> and you've got great shows like Hot Licks with Willie, with Willie Six. You've got the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus and many, many more. And it's free. And it's absolutely free. RockRageRadio.com. Um, and I think that I hit all the, the things. Our links, I think Rock so. Rage, yeah. the Wolf's Customs. Sure. <clears throat> it's just, um, sorry, the mind addles, guys. Uh, but uh, we have a fun show for you as always. Plus, um, in addition, I want to hit a couple of uh, extra topics because I saw a couple of cool movies yeah. and I started that Beatles thing oh. on Disney Plus. So there you go. We're gonna we're gonna maybe talk about that you know a little bit later as well. So here we are back once again at the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus, and we are gonna be getting into this right now. So um, we're gonna start off with Lily as always. Always. And um, Kevin and I will just kind of provide color commentary. Which color? <laughs> I like chartreuse. You like green? Yeah. <laughs> For some reason. Okay. Already. All right. There we go. There you uh, go. Whew, I had to get that out. I felt better. You all right? Oh, that's good. Ooh, it's, it's all out of there. <laughs> I'm saving stuck, it up for stuck. Friday night. It was stuck. Yeah. It was just stuck. And it just stuck I just, there? I just had to do a little wiggle. There it is. I got it again. You're going to hurt yourself. So Again. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. Um, who's, who's the first band we want to um, uh, decimate, destroy, make fun out of, mock incessantly? No, no. I'm actually going to go with the Pretenders first. 
What were they pretending? (laughs) A lot of things. Wow. Um, British rock, American rock band formed in 78. The original band consisted of founder and main songwriter Chrissy Hind, Mm -hmm. James Honeyman Scott, Pete Farndon, and Martin Chambers. After releasing two of the greatest rock albums of the New Wave era, the original Pretenders lineup underwent tragic events that would have permanently silenced most most bands. I'm going to talk with a lisp tonight, apparently. Okay. Uh, In less than a year, the group lost founding members Honeyman Scott and Farndon to drug-related deaths. Uh, Chrissy Hind was determined to soldier on. She recruited a few friend, few friends, few uh, friends. He was in the Foo Fighters. <laughs> right. Foo Friends, the, not the Foo Fighters. The, the Foo, Foo Fighters. Fighters. The Foo Fighters. Yes, rock pile <laughs> guitarist Billy Browner, Bremner, and big country bassist Tony Butler uh, to record the pop hit "Back on the Chain Gang" uh, before forming a new version of the Pretenders with journeyman guitarist Robbie McIntosh and Malcolm Foster on bass in the lineup. Um, in 1984, that version of the band released "Learning to Crawl," which stands uh, with the uh, as one of the group's greatest. Um, works so I think it sort of applies, but I wanted to get that one out of the way. <laughs> Time the yeah, Avenger, yeah. that is a great riff. That's that's killer. So they they had to re- <laughs> Chrissy felt they had to replace the ones that they lost, which I, in turn worked out so for the band. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, and and they did. They soldiered on and did like good music. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's but just it. Both of those guys had had serious drug problems. Yeah. And um, Chrissy was involved with the bass player Mm -hmm. in the very beginning of The Pretenders. And they had this kind of hot and heavy romance. And then I guess as they got on the road, it cooled off. off. And like, I I would imagine part of that is the temptations that go along with being on the road Mm -hmm. for both of them. Sure. Not just him or her, as well as the accessibility to, to substances, drugs. <clears throat> and a lot Which of is just part of the culture. Yes, yeah, it's just part of the culture. And some people are like, some people seem seem to be able to like chill on that, and some people they just go like drugs. <laughs> uh, I probably would be on that train. <laughs> it's like diving into the. There's like a giant bag of cocaine that a you're just diving pool. into. <laughs> <clears throat> and um, that's why I read the Bible on the road. What? That's where you kept your weed. I read it right, yeah, keep myself planted. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Is that a pun planted? Weed? Ha ha. I, did, I didn't make the connection. Thanks, Mrs. Obvious. You're welcome. <laughs> um, okay, and I wanted to take a quick look at some to get my mind around something real quick. You want to take oh, a quick look at something? I got something for you to look at. Look over here. I, I don't know what this is, man. Right is anybody here. else having an issue with um, Chrome, like not wanting to let you go to like the normal sites you always on, go Chrome. to? I haven't had an issue with Chrome, but I oh, don't Chrome. use it that often. So. Uh, Chrome. I only use it at work. Shit. Shite. Um, give me the. Um, I'm kind of embarrassed to do this, to say this because I, I can't look it up. I'm drawing a blank. Uh, the the bass player James Honeymoon Scott and who? Um, Pete Farndon. Pete Farndon. Well, he was the bass player. Bass player. I guess what oh, I thought. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, but what had happened was um, she had fired Pete because oh. they broke up. And mm-hmm. like, if this happens, you know, your, your feelings are hurt and you got to get on stage mm-hmm. and play with this the, music, play with work with the person, just work with this person, <laughs> right, right. especially in a situation like in a rock band where there's like a lot of <clears throat> high emotions going on anyways. And, um, so he began being like, you know, playing like really drunk. Oh. Turning his bass the whole way up and refusing to turn down, like being louder than everybody. What's wrong with that? <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that, is there? Passive aggressive. Not if you're just stage. a little. Not if you're Getty Lee, there's no problem at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, <laughs> or you know, Chris yeah, Squire band. is one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not Pete. <laughs> so it was. Um, so he just became like uh, they just could they just couldn't work with. This is how Chrissy Hine told the story. So like you know, there's two sides to every story. There might be Pete, and, and I've also heard that she is a real B I T C H. What? Yeah, there I, could I, be a third I, story. I, Who knows? I, 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 heard, I would story. imagine that the uh, the truth <laughs> is somewhere. In, in the between. In, in between, in yeah. between, but we'll never know. No. We'll never really know. So, so she fired him, and then he was found dead in a bathtub, all hopped up, and uh, mm. she that bothered her Magic. because well, yeah. she felt like you know. But there was nothing to she with. She was what my dad would say. She was between the shit and the stink. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was just no, no good. Um, 
you know, there was no good solution there. You know, I'm going to, you know, this, not only did I break this guy's heart, uh, now I've got to fire him from the band. And then he goes and fucking dies. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. that's got to be like, oh, man, what the fuck? You know, in a, in, if I may, in a related uh, note here, uh, Shit in the Stink t-shirts will be available. <laughs> <laughs> Pittsburgh Kevin's our new marketing guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah Between nice. the shit and the stink. Mm-hmm. That's going to be the name of my next album. <laughs> Between the shit and the stink. Mm-hmm. Uh, Martin Chambers, though, hey, mm-hmm. he's a trooper. He hung He uh, hung, hung. in there and uh, continued as the drummer for like forever. Um, and uh, apparently learned his lesson of regarding drugs and stuff. Yes, good. You know, good. learned from other people's mistakes, mm, etc. Okay. Some so, people snap out of it. Yeah. <laughs> so. But uh, <clears throat> they did, as Lily was pointing out, went on and had some really, really big songs Aye. after that. But a lot of people really, that lineup with James Honeymoon and Pete Farndon is kind of precious to me that's the one i think the of the original, pretenders yeah, i think of that line up got you into them yeah yeah, yeah. i yeah. mean i got pretenders too when i was in high school and i it just blew my mind you know i was just like mm-hmm. it was a total mm-hmm. revelation so michael uh, goltz wants to say that he's not photographing shit in the stink for you <laughs> <laughs> it's a dollar in it for you uh, i'll give you a dollar give you a dollar <laughs> so okay um so, th- so that's a good pick um what you, what's the next one that you got? We're just going to kind of riff off of yours. Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, yep. oh word. Because okay. you're a woman. Oh, oh, God. We'll do a little bit different tonight. Um, Van Halen, uh, credited with... Re- Never heard of one. I know. Is, I they know. changed? Sorry, I keep going. Some, I do the this, obscure. change members? Is this some <laughs> indie <times>. band? <laughs> yes. <laughs> credited with restoring hard rock to the forefront of the music scene, Van Halen was known for its energetic live shows and for its uh, virtual, virtuosic talent of its lead guitarist, Eddie Van Halen, from 74 to 85. Van Halen consisted of Eddie Van Halen, Eddie's brother, drummer Alex Van Halen, vocalist David Lee Roth, and bassist vocalist Michael Anthony. In 85, Roth left the band to embark on a solo career and was placed replaced by a very successful former Montrose lead vocalist, Sammy Hagar. And he was also a solo artist at that time, too, because he yeah, had out like, three really, lock yeah. locks on those records. Uh-huh. Out. Yeah. Um, with Hagar, the group released, the, released four U.S. number one multi-platinum albums over the course of 11 years. Um, and, um, of course the loyal Roth Van Halen fans were sort of like on the wayside of it because, you know, people don't like change. Yeah. yeah definitely um, don't like change. I know people hate it. Yeah. Um, but they didn't hate Hagar either. Uh, in fact, uh, they did keep some of the loyal fans as well as changing their sound and music to form a whole new fan base. And now there's always that question, Van Halen or Van Hagar. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's great. As much as I think David Lee Roth is just. An amazing front man and yes. an amazing singer in his own mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm, He's mm-hmm. a great singer. Don't let's not like that. But uh, unless you go see him live. But um, <laughs> no, okay. But oh! but um, Sammy took them where Dave could not take them. Right. right. They were not yeah. going to go and, and have songs like "Why Can't This Be Love" and these giant mm-hmm, pop. Mm-hmm. And Dave didn't want to take them there. <clears throat> right. No, right. he was not going to be able to. He was not going to be able to take them there. Um, that wasn't. Let, that was not his shtick. Like, Holy! So, so I think the bowling alley upstairs is <laughs> wow <clears throat> open again. So, um, <laughs> um, so you know, it, it they was, weren't. They just just would never have been able to do what they, what they yeah, did. No, and no. I, and you know, they could have. And they could they could have saved Van Halen because think about how many bands like they have like a sort of cycle of albums that are really mm-hmm, big mm-hmm. but they but then the sound in the world starts to change a bit and they can't right. they can't keep up they can't get they can't into that yeah. there's a few bands that can that can weather stuff like it the rolling stones have been very good at that yes. we're very good at that through the 60s 70s and 80s, 80s. and maybe even mm-hmm. a little bit in the 90s yeah. <clears throat> but uh you know um but even they ran out of steam on it, you know. Yeah. You too was able to do that for maybe two decades. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. But you know, most bands can't can't do that. And um, you if you think about records like uh, Women and Children first, and you think about records like um, Diver Down and stuff like that, and you think what they sounded like, and then you think about the the next the rest of the eighties, uh-huh. like, you know what what I mean? Like, where were they really? You know, they, they seemed kind of like... They wouldn't have fit I don't in. Know, I don't know I don't if they would have been able to in. do yeah. anything. Maybe they would have, maybe they wouldn't have. And maybe Eddie was very aware of that. And, um, you know, did, you know, did a... So, you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. you guys... Did anybody here ever, like, get out of, a, like, a relationship by, like, being an asshole? No. 
right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's like when you don't want to break up with somebody because you don't want to be the heavy. You just become an absolute <clears throat> you jerk. Become this, you become impossible to be around, and they right. dump you, and you're like, yes! <laughs> yes. And yeah. I, I kind of wonder if that wasn't something that would happen with Van Halen. Like, like maybe, yeah, because Eddie's not stupid. Um, he knows what's he knows what sounds good. He knows what works, and he knew what he wanted to do musically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I think the album 1984 is a sort of testament to kind of like where his head was, you know, with songs like I'll Wait and working with people like Michael McDonald and stuff like that. <clears throat> <clears throat> and jump, of course. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Hey, hey, let me ask you something real quick, because I, I brought this up at work today, and I couldn't remember the uh, the vocalist's name. Who was the female vocalist that they considered? Patty Smith. Yeah, Patty that's Scandal. it. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, they not remember. Now who this was. was after Sammy Hagar had left. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but but in any in, in any case, no, no, that was not after Sammy. I apologize. That was, was after, after Dave. Dave left. Yeah, it was after you're Dave. right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <clears throat> they they Eddie kicked around an idea of doing an album with like there'd be different singers. Right. You know, right. Slash had had did a couple records yes. like uh -huh. Tony Iommi did a record like that. <clears throat> um, and that would have been really fun. Um, and w incidentally, he wrote um, right now for Joe Cocker. Oh, interesting. He, that was the hmm. song. Okay. That was what All he right. had. And if you listen to Sammy's voice, you go like, oh, I can I hear can a little hear Joe Cocker. Yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of kind of going on there. Um but in any but that song is really high. I mean, that song is so mm -hmm. freaking high. Um in any case, uh so that he was Sammy was able to take them somewhere that Dave, I don't think that Dave probably, probably couldn't have taken them. Couldn't have taken yeah, them. Exactly. And they became... were able to have a whole like brand new thing and retrain a lot. Because Sam, it wasn't like they hired Lawrence Welk. You know, <laughs> they hired a guy who was a rock and roll, like rock. Right, he was in one right. of super heavy rock band yeah. from, the, from the 70s, uh, Montrose. And his solo stuff was, you know, rock and yeah, roll. Yeah, he was stuff. a songwriter. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. For me, it went from party to serious with the band. Mm. Oh, my. Oh, my. No more messing I around. don't know. I mean, they've got songs like Spanked, which is about getting shit-faced. <laughs> they've got some, you know, that's a Sammy Hagar Wait, song. Um, good Enough, you know, that's about, you know, spanked. getting down and dirty. So I know. I mean, there's still the party songs, but it got just a little more serious with all the love. The love. Oh. Well, they did. They did well, some love songs. So well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so, 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 so far we have talked about uh, Van Halen. And the pretenders. And the, the pretenders. pretenders. The pretenders. That was like you came out with. You came out strong, Lily, with the pretenders. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And 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 you threw me because oh, I wasn't expecting you to come it. out with the pretenders, but that was. A, I yeah, gotta hand it to you. Was, oh, like some welcome. of these are super obvious. We're gonna talk about. <laughs> I think we're gonna talk about Iron Maiden, ACDC, right? Sure. Yes. We have to talk about them. Sure. You know, there's some of them are like but very boy, very obvious. But the, the pretenders is like ah. Oh. Nice move nice there. Really. Nice move. I see what you did there. Nice. I see what you did there. Exactly. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed that one. Yeah. No. So thanks. <laughs> thanks for doing that. If we get anybody watching, you want to uh, say? We do have uh, Michael Goltz watching for sure. Hi, He's Mike. got a lot to say today. Um, he stopped listening to Comfortably Numb on repeat on Sirius just to listen to Lou's podcast. <laughs> Thank you. And you know how important you are if he stops listening Thank to that. Thank you. Um, Wolf and Raven are watching. Carrie Livingstone is uh, welcoming, welcoming us back. Hey, Carrie. Todd Kane says, I am fucking here. Hey, Todd. Stop. Thank you. Todd hey, I'm fucking me, here. Todd sent me, some, <laughs> Todd sent me a really nice message last week. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. And uh, that's all who's watching right now um, that I can see. I appreciate those who you are talking. Guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so okay, so let's get it. So who's what? What are we gonna go over next? So we're just gonna go ahead and talk about Iron Maiden, so I can do get Bruce Dickinson on the way. Do it. Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden. Hold on. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> beginning back in '75, uh, Iron Maiden have certainly put. Uh, in the hard yards in order to be considered one of the most influential and most revered heavy metal groups of all time. I don't know why you're doing that. <laughs> wow. However, it seems their su success has been largely dependent on the presence of singer Bruce Dickinson. Mm -hmm. that dick. I did. <laughs> After releasing two albums in the early 80s with the original singer Paul Deano, uh, they gave him the boot. Uh, by 81, Deano was demonstrating increasingly self-destructive behavior, mm. uh, drug usage, of course. And uh, Deano says it wasn't just that I was snorting a bit of coke, though I was just going for it nonstop 24 hours a day, every day. Um, yes, the pool of coke. The bands had uh, the band had diving in that. That's what the sound was. That was Lily yep, diving in a is. giant bowl of coke. Free fall, swan dive. The band had commitments <laughs> piling up that oh went on for God. months. Lily doesn't do cocaine. That was a joke. I don't. <clears throat> I don't do. I, I drink. Disclaimer. 
Um, he couldn't uh, see his way to the end of doing the drugs and getting all the things the band needed to do uh, together. Um, he knew he'd never last the whole tour. It was too much. Uh, with his performance waning, Deanna was immediately dismissed following the Killer World Tour, at which point the band had already selected his replacement. Oh. Um, after a meeting with Rod Smallwood at the Reading Festival, Bruce Dickinson... She said Smallwood. I did. Previously of Samson, auditioned for Iron Maiden in September 81 and was immediately hired. Why not listen to that voice? Oh, my gosh. Uh, his first release with the group was The Number of the Beast, widely regarded as one of the best heavy metal metal, blah, 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 metal albums of all time. Or heavy metal boodle. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, after a 12-year stint, though, Dickinson left the group only to be replaced by Blaze Finnegan. Finnegan's two years in the group resulted in two albums. Often, I cannot tell you anything of that. <laughs> Neither period. could I. Mm. <laughs> um, often touted as the group's worst. I actually oh. know more... Paul Diano's uh, well, yeah. music than I do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. After being told to take a hike, they re-recruited Dickinson and haven't let him go since. And that is the best move ever. I, I mean, come on. I mean, <laughs> Iron Maiden without Bruce Dickinson. Come on. Come on. Come, come on. on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> That's like it's Kraft real. macaroni and cheese without the cheese. It's not real Right. Life. <laughs> it's like, come on. What are you even doing? It's like, come what, on. What's no. this crap? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, just just. It don't. would be crap macaroni and macaroni and poop. Their hits. They're not trying to put out any right. new music. But Iron Maiden really wasn't done no. at that no. point. They were like still like the trying to put out music. The stir up. <clears throat> so like you know, just call them that. I mean, Jeff Tate. I mean, you maybe That's dips close. his toes. And and the good and the dude from um, uh, um, D- Dream Theater sometimes can get into a little bit of that territory. But uh, I mean, Bruce is in a class all by himself. There's like there's like you know he's in the Bruce Dickinson category. <laughs> There's nobody right, else that right. does what this he does. It. It. It, yeah, so it's just like what kind of what what kind of music do you sing, Bruce? I sing Bruce Dickinson music. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. That's the only music I do. I don't. I you know. No, I tried to learn you know other music, but I, I couldn't That's sing Ronnie James Dio music. I can only can only do Bruce Dickinson. He music. has tried to do other stuff, and it just does not sound um, right. There is a record that I've heard it, once in a while, like um, Jim Florentine, he has a great show on, I shouldn't be plugging other people's stuff, but I fucking love Florentine's show on Ozzy great. Boneyard. And um, he, it's called Metal Metal Midgets. And- um, <laughs> Oh, <whoa! laughs> Exactly like oh, that. Oh, boy. Um, but he, he will play like stuff you just never hear. And he's played occasionally stuff from yeah. that. And it sounds so like out of place. It doesn't yeah. work for me. It just, it he doesn't, so, and it's like a the song. I think that the songs are good. Like, like I'm like that's a cool song. But like, it's not... it, like that'd be a great song for mm. like um, Mitch Malloy or somebody mm. like that to sing. Mm-hmm. It's got that more rock and roll kind of thing. You know, his thing is like the Bruce melodic. Just, yeah, that doesn't doesn't work. Operatic. Like yeah, um, wonderful. A lot of vibrato. It's not operatic. It's it's just he's really heavy on the way he does his well, yeah. vibrato. But that's just he's, how you know, I hear he's got that it. classical yeah. training kind of thing going on. And um, there's just no way, no way. But the Paul Dano Diano um, Iron Maiden is, I think, is really cool. You can t- you could tell that like the band isn't quite there because mm-hmm. you know what I mean. It it has a different character to it. But I like. You can hear their punk rock influence. Yeah. Well, something oh, that yeah. people don't realize <clears throat> that Iron Maiden has a punk rock influence. They they like the punk. And with Paul as a singer, who's he's more of a punk kind of singer, it's it's really interesting. It's like this is like kind of cool, and you kind of wonder like what they might have developed. They right. would have been a different band, mm-hmm. but you kind of wonder like what that could have what would have been. I mean, Bruce is so amazing. <clears throat> he was going to make it anyhow. Like Samson Legit. could have ended up being a really big band, mm-hmm. but it, that name is terrible. But um, <laughs> that's awful. What's the movie that 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 they're in? Every once in a while, oh. it's some, it's a cheesy like '80s horror movie, I do and all of a sudden they're in a club, and you hear this voice like that's like Bruce Dickinson, and that's him, and it's Samson. <laughs> now I have to look it up because I do know this, and it's and, I've, and it like it, I, it always catches me by surprise. Like oh, that's right, that's oh. that's who's in this. Like yeah. I always forget it. It's a cheese mo. <laughs> it's a cheese mo movie. It has to Survey be. says. Jeez. Nope. Right still yet. looking it it's up. It's not coming up yet. Still looking. So uh, while we're waiting on that, let's maybe, uh, I don't know. Uh... No. What the heck? That scared the crap out of me. <laughs> Lou, stop it. I know. Whew. It's good to be back, everybody. It's really good to be back in podcast. <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen. Incubus. Is that the movie you mean? Maybe it is. Okay. Maybe, it is. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, well. 
I don't know. It's, it's, I, I don't want to take a hundred years. It's to your, find it. it's your revelant. Yes. Okay. It um, is your revelant. Your revelant. Snorted. That's snorted. great. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, uh, so anyway, so I think that, that that that's a good pick. Uh, <clears throat> I would like to talk about uh, briefly about a band that I really love. Go. And Do I. these guys were very like. Mm -hmm. Very cavalier. Hmm. You kind of never knew who was going to be on one record to the next. Okay. But the 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 thing was, they had big records. No matter, kind of like no matter what, no matter who was in the band for a while. Okay. And it, I would like to talk about the band Rainbow. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Rainbow is a band that sort of was spawned from the leftovers of Deep Purple. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, Richie Blackmore. And um, Roger Glover eventually, I don't know if he was in the beginning, but he did eventually play bass on um, uh, so, uh, on a couple of records with him. <clears throat> but um, but it is a uh, um, hard rock band that uh, got started in about 1975. And um, the original singer for this band is none other then hook em horns himself, Ronnie James Dio. The original, <laughs> original, original, original singer. The original one? The original singer. And they did <laughs> um, arguably like some of their best work with him, including um, Rising Long and Long Live Rock and Roll. Uh, this was before, um, of course, before Dio had anything to do with Black Sabbath. Um, but, if, but, 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 um, the band didn't uh, last with him more than I think about three albums. <clears throat> um, what happened was Ronnie, our uh, uh, Richie Blackmore, who's basically the leader there. Richie Blackmore's the lead guitar player from uh, Deep Purple. He was um, he, he, <laughs> he told Ronnie James Dio told him, says, "Look, I'll be in your band, but like we don't sing any like love songs or songs about <laughs> relationships. Sure. You know, we don't, we don't, we don't do. We don't do that. that here. We don't do that here. Yeah, you yeah. like that? That you go someplace else for that? And they were like, "Yeah, absolutely. I don't want to do any of that." And then uh, they after they released their third album, I believe, with Ronnie James Dio, Richie Blackmore was in the press saying, "Yeah, the next album's gonna have like relationship songs and maybe some ballads and stuff like mm -hmm. that." And Dio was like, uh, "Yeah, I'm not. Nine. I'm, I'm done. Nope. Peace. I'm out. See ya." <clears throat> he left. And uh, so this isn't all about Ronnie James Dio, but in any case, uh, and then they they brought in a like a really amazing singer who I really wish they would have done more with, and I think they wanted to do more with, but um, I, he's a, he's a great voice, but I think that him and I think Richie never kind of like latched on to him and could figure out how to write songs from. But they had they had a big hits like um, "Since You've Been Gone" with Graham mm -hmm. Bonnet on yep. on lead vocals. Oh, I know what it was too. They, he, Richie was unsure of Graham's look. You know, at this time, Rainbow <laughs> still had the sort of like lo all, like long hair, kind of hippie kind of look. Graham had short hair, what? wore like a kind of a, like a suit, a, no, kind no, of like a, suit. a yeah, but you know what I mean. Oh yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of more of like a pop kind of look, mm -hmm. and he was under the impression, well, that's what we're going for. So like, I <laughs> should like portray that, yeah. and um, I'm sure there was a lot out. of alcohol and drugs involved, <laughs> but but they had. Um, that's they, I mean, thing. they had they had a big record with him. Like since you've been gone, is a song that you still still hear on the radio every single day. Yeah, you know, just like "Man on the Silver Mountain," which was a Dio song that Rainbow did with them. <laughs> you hear that about every single day. Okay, so so then, then and then and then and what then, happened? Then, Lou, tell me. They bring in this guy who has worked with everybody, including Ingve Lily, <sighs> uh, Joe Lynn Turner. Yes, and they had even bigger songs when they got an MTV. Mm. Um, and uh, you know it was a it was a you know it was a whole thing. They they were really able to kind of and so he just kept on uh, uh, Richie Blackmore just kept on like evolving the band. And as the band evolved, he realized it had to have a different like face, mm -hmm. a different uh, persona, like like in front of it. Which if you wait, if you think about it, it's kind of pretty fucking brilliant. That's like a pretty <laughs> brilliant. And it's, it's pretty, and they were really you know they had big records. They, you know, it's not like you know. Oh, they got a singer. And, uh, we don't like this guy. And the right turn no, the radio no, off. No, 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 big records, big, 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 big records. So, um, uh, I think that you could definitely put Rainbow on a list like this because just what they were uh, able to, what, 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 basically Richie Blackmore was able to accomplish, 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 accomplish. 
with his accomplices. Ah. <laughs> ah. No matter who go. his accomplice was, mm. it worked. Uh, he was able. He was able to do it. I mean, it, it was. It's pretty. It's pretty freaking amazing. Um, and uh, Richie's a, an amazing guitar player. And there has been rumors that uh, Rainbow is going to do something, but oh. we shall see. We shall see. Uh, what do you got, Lily V Six? I got Pantera. Oh. Pen and Teller. Not Pen and Teller. Not Pen and Teller. I would like to Pen see and Teller Terra. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That would be interesting. Panera. Pantera. Panera. Pantera mm, bread. Delicious. I say that all the time. So do I. <laughs> Every time I go, Pantera bread. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. That sounds like me. I'm scared. It's terrifying. Um, unbeknownst to most lovers of metal, Pantera began life as a glam metal band. <laughs> and if you have heard some of their stuff, they sounded like they were going to be like poison. Um and they could have been one of the biggest influences of Poison. However, uh, after vocalist Terry Glaze left in 86, the group brought in Phil Anselmo as their new singer and released Power Metal in 1988. <laughs> you can hear some of their horrible glam metal stuff in movies like, um, I think yeah. it's The Paper Brigade. Oh. <laughs> stuff like that. Um, the addition of Anselmo led to the group beefing up their sound and their second album with him 1990s Cowboys from Hell brought Pantera to the spotlight of course uh, the album mm. popularized, popularized the groove metal genre while a 1992 follow up vulgar display of power which we've talked about on the show many times achieved an even heavier sound uh, Far Beyond Driven debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 um, yes after these increasingly <laughs> yes. successful albums um, 2003 saw the break of, uh, breakup of Pantera and 2004 saw the murder of guitarist Dimebag Daryl um I thought Ooh. Damage Plan was a good band, by the way. They were. I think yeah. it's a cool band. Yeah. Um, Anselmo uh, is these days the vocalist of a band called Down, but he's not quite uh, hit the heights that he did with Pantera again. Um, he gave them the start to their signature sound that we know today and was part of their best-known lineup. Hmm. So, yes. I'm glad they changed from glam metal because I don't think it would have worked out so well. <laughs> no. What? They were They were known as like, they, they were an, so their glam metal band, on movies was called the Green Mummies. But they were Pantera. <laughs> but they called themselves the Green Mummies. Because <laughs> huh. when I looked them up, when you look up the Green Mummies, you're like, uh -huh. wait a minute. Wait a second. Pantera. <laughs> Hold on now. Um, I like the band Down. I bought the first album. I have it somewhere on CD. Somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere. on CD. <laughs> I have Down Syndrome. That's what they should have called. Wow. They should have called their next album Syndrome. Wow. Nice. <laughs> Fired. Wow. <laughs> Sir. And they from New Orleans. New Orleans. S sludge. Sludge metal and southern rock, stoner metal. Like Southern Metal, like these guys, I really like the band that um, uh, that Zach Wild formed in between like the two Aussie albums that he did, and it called called Pride and Glory. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, Down yeah, right. definitely is like kind of in that kind of vein, you know. Corrosion yeah. of Conformity kind of kind of sure. works in there as well. Um, but it's if you haven't if you haven't heard a Down record, you should you should check them out. You know, it's yeah, I'm down with super that. heavy, sludgy. <laughs> Rock and roll, you know, cool riffs. Sabbath. I mean, basically, you know, when you go back and you listen to, early, you know, the, you know, the Sabbath, you know, first albums. You when the you know those songs that are like super heavy and slow. I mean, like they, they were kind of inventing sludge right there, or doom. <laughs> sludge. Sludge. There's a great doom sludge band from uh, that kick my ass if I call them the wrong thing. Don't do it. <laughs> if I call them Doom or if I call them Doom or Sledge, they're actually if I say that they're Sledge, actually Doom, or if I say they're right, right, you know, they're actually Sledge. Oh, uh, Molasses Barge are really good. Oh, I love Re them. That's a, this is a really good band. I play them on my Kevin, show. you got to see this guy's guitar rig. Yeah, it's it's it? like stupid. <laughs> is he stupid? I mean, I mean stupid in like the best the good way. way. Yeah, like, the best I was, so possible he's playing way. some whacked out guitar. I can't remember what kind of guitar he's playing, but he's playing like an old like Selmer amp. Well, <laughs> and he's got like he's got like he's got probably he's got like pedals on the floor and they're probably probably thirty dollars there you know mm -hmm, what I mean? just mm -hmm, like and he's like yeah, yeah. He's, he's like told me he's like he's I just find he's like, I just play whatever it, I like it, it I don't care good. what the cost you know yeah. what it looks like or what the cost is and man, man like dude his sound was like insane well, I was they, like what the fuck is the sound are you making it was insane and it was like no like trickery it was just him yeah, playing just, you know yeah well yeah. they they just played their last show ever oh so. what? Yeah, oh. I could see though. <laughs> 
Anyways, guys, if uh, go check them out. They've got they've got tracks on Spotify and stuff. But it's nice, big, and heavy, sludgy, doomy, sludgy, doomy, doomy, sludgy. Do me sludgy, Doomy. baby. Oh, my hey, God. Baby, do me a Shaka. sludgy, man. <laughs> I like my sludgy shaking, not stirred. <laughs> <laughs> my whole brain just hurts I'm, I'm, sometimes. Wow. So I'm in I a love rare you guys, form. I've been off. I've been, I didn't think I could do this. You know what I mean? I didn't this think This just comes naturally. Like, right away. Like, guess what? <laughs> acting like Back idiot. in the saddle. <laughs> You're yeah. Back in the saddle again. It's the easiest thing to do is act like a moron. Yeah, you <laughs> see, it comes so unless naturally. you try too hard to do it. <laughs> so, yeah. so what's so? There's we got a whole bunch. What do you what do you, what do you got next? AC DC. Never heard of. Them. I know. Not a fan. All, all the bands you is haven't that a heard new of. Band? No. Ha! AC DC's fame both here and abroad is legendary. Mm-hmm. From the early days as a costume wearing glam rock group, they were destined for greatness. Uh, with everyone except Angus Young dropping the costume angle due to the Skyhooks doing the same thing, which was another band. Uh, the group kicked out singer Dave Evans and brought in Bon Scott. Mm-hmm. Um, their career with Scott lasted six years but and, and produced legendary songs like Highway to Hell, TNT, and It's a Long Way to the Top, which we all know all yes. the songs. Um, and then sadly, Bon Scott died from alcohol poisoning in 1980, and the group recruited Brian Johnson as their new singer. Uh, returning with Back in Black the same year, the group saw phenomenal success to the point where it is still the second best-selling album of all time, and they are still making records. Yeah, yeah, they are. Because they just released one, what was it, two years ago? Mm -hmm. A year ago now? I can't remember. But that's one of the bands that really... It's a pretty good record. It's not bad. It's It's not bad. Yeah, Yeah, it's it's ACDC. The thing with ACDC is they have not changed their sound the entire time they have been together, and it it works. Yeah, it doesn't get (laughs) old. People love it. Yeah. So, even with the two... Lead singer lineup changes, and you know well, we are not going to count that other guy. Yeah. Um, it's it. They've been super successful, so even with Brian Johnson, and it's, we're it's, not going to talk about the guy from the GNR. Driven guitar <laughs> based rock and roll, and that's why it, it does. It, that's why. Yeah, they um um, and they're nice boys. <laughs> they are nice boys. I've seen them once. I've I, I'm still deaf from that night. But, <laughs> 15 years ago or whatever. I saw them in Miami. Oh, my God, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I hear that they're very loud. I've never heard them, but... They are well, I so loud. I think it, when they play uh, Starlight, I think you can hear it out here. I saw them with an ex-boyfriend <laughs> that was like this the whole night. Yo, fuck that fucker. I'm like, seriously? I'm sorry, I said it. Go away. Yeah. <laughs> Just leave. I'll see you after the show. <laughs> um, trying to find um, the... Uh, Mr. Goodbar? No, there's a third young brother, and oh. he did something, and I'm trying to find... Did he? I'm not, oh, brother, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah he was yeah. older than them, yeah, right? Yeah, he was older guy, and he like yeah. worked with them as like a producer or yeah. something, and I was trying to pull up his information here, and I just, uh, I, I, I couldn't find Chrome. Uh, oh, Chrome. Anyway, so we're going to just kind of get off of that. But, it, but um, yeah, of, of course, I mean, they had... And what's so interesting is... Um, they did that for they did Highway to Hell, mm-hmm. which is with um, the first time they worked with Mutt Lang, and um, you know they were really excited with the kind of sound and everything mm-hmm. they were going to, and then that happened, and they were really like didn't know what they were going to do, but they had known Brian, he was like a mm-hmm. kind of a guy that they had known, and um, so he he came in, and then they do Back in Black, which is really like so you hear the sort of beginnings of that on. Um, Highway to Hell, and then Back in Black is like they refined it, mm-hmm. right? You know what I mean? Right. They really totally honed it, mm-hmm. and um, and then of course they did, you know, from there on for those about to rock and all, on, on all those great records. Um, <clears throat> Brian has a definitely a, the, both these guys have very distinctive voices, yes, you know, for sure. In this, in the same vein, in the same way that uh, Bruce Dickinson has a very distinctive voice, you know him instantly, mm-hmm. you know Bon Scott instantly. And you know Brian Johnson instantly. They, you just you just do. Their sound is, um, and again, like while I was making the joke about you know Bru- Bru- uh, mm. Bruce Dickinson can only sing Bruce Dickinson music, but <laughs> you ever hear a band and go like, oh yeah, they're doing like they're doing like an ACDC song. Yes, you know, yes. they're not. A, music you know, and is... I mean, it could be like a fit, like Kicks. Like a lot of these bands have these songs mm-hmm. um, that have uh, uh, the band Thunder. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of these bands have these songs that are kind of like. And you go, oh, that's a like kind of an ACDC thing. Like right, there's right. like a, there's like an, ACDC is kind of like its own musical style. Yeah. Yes. 
You well, know. locally, uh, Gene the Werewolf sounds yeah, like ACDC. Yeah, 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 very they much have so. big ACDC yeah, influence yeah. for sure. Because I thought the first time I heard them, is that ACDC? I'm not sure. And then I had to look them up, but I'm like, oh, that's local that's band. That's Gene. pretty cool. This yeah. is several yeah, years so ago. That's a good, that's a good example. Yeah, exactly, if you guys do yeah. not know Joan, Joan, Gene the Werewolf, you definitely should check them. They're like, um, they're they're just fucking bad. They're fun, awesome. and they're they're from our our uh, hometown. Yeah, great band, great band. Um, <clears throat> but. ACDC did just have that, and it's somehow what I think. Um, I think Malcolm wrote a lot of the riffs. I, I'm sure Angus does too. But they seem to have, um, you know, like Led Zeppelin and Van Halen had certain approaches to riffs. Like you know, Jimmy Page would basically would was doing stuff like with the blues scale, like kind of on the mm -hmm, low strings, mm -hmm. and that's how we would come up with that. Um, and then like Eddie did his thing with like a lot of like open string things. So, so in right, other words, these are riffs right. are kind of like single string kind of ideas yeah. that, you know, single note ideas, you know, whereas Angus and Malcolm, their riffs are chords. They do these things with the chords, the way they move the chords around in a rhythmic way mm -hmm. is the riff, which is really cool. Very cool. Yeah. Really, really cool. And it's cool when somebody can do that. There is an example of a, um, um, a song by, uh, there's a song by Tom Petty of all people that, has that um, um, chord riff thing in it, but and and he and it, but it does not sound like ACDC and it's free falling. Go back and listen to what what the riff is. It's just it's it's three chords changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they, yeah, and yeah. It, but it's that same type. It's that same approach of let's make oh, a riff yeah. out of the chords, just minus the distortion. Yeah, but yeah, yeah now I think like about it, you're absolutely right. It's like right. kind of a different kind of song, but yeah. he uses that same concept. But uh -huh. ACDC has this like the syncopated things while the drums the whole time are really giving you the four mm -hmm. on the floor. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes it give, gives it that awesome groove. Um, and Brian just 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 is an amazing singer. I mean, he really he doesn't have he hasn't had too many problems either. He had that one brief thing where he got the he, tinnitus, he, yeah tinnitus or yeah something. so bad. Yeah. He said yeah. you're going to go deaf, so he took a break. And Axl Rose stepped in and uh, well, wait a minute here. Like f first of all, people are like <laughs> people are like like when we did the uh, hated replacements or whatever. Yeah. he wasn't replacing anybody in the band. No. He was I helping know. the band Filling out him. so they could continue to yeah. tour. I know. And He's I think it would be it. kind of a cool show to say like shit, man. I saw Axl Rose with ACDC. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. So I think it would be kind of a memorable memorable experience. But in any case, um, you know, Brian has been very consistent with them, you know, uh, you mm -hmm. know, since, since, since for a long ass time. time. Yeah. Long as, time. Lo as old as I am. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, 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 it's good stuff. Um, so, uh, did do you have, uh, who, who do you, who else, who do you have next on your list? <clears throat> um, I was going to talk about Phil Collins. I mean, Genesis. <laughs> That's sure. what I meant. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, uh, the group performed uh, as schoolboys back in whatever year, 68, uh, in this, the 70s lineup featuring singer Petey, Peter Gabriel and guitarist Steve Hackett. I can't talk tonight. Petey? Petey. I thought you were going to say Petey. Gabriel. Petey Gabriel. Hey, Petey, Petey, Petey Gabriel. Gabriel. <laughs> they probably didn't find that. <laughs> you made me lose my face. Petey Gabriel over there singing. They were among the pioneers of progressive rock. Their live shows began to feature Gabriel's theatrical costumes and performances. Gay. Foxtrot was their first what? hit in the UK and selling England by the pound, reached number three there, featuring their first US hit, I Know What I Like, in your wardrobe. Oh, no, no. Uh, the concept album <laughs> The Lamb Dies Down on Broadway was promoted uh, with a transatlantic tour and an elaborate stage show before Gabriel left the group. Having failed to find a suitable vocalist for the new album, Collins went into the studio and attempted to sing Squonk. Right, His performance it. was well received by the band and they decided that he should be their new vocalist. Collins then sang on the remaining tracks and he took over as lead singer. As the group released a trick of the tr uh, the tail and wind and weathering, I can't even say it right, a trick of the tail and wind and weathering mm. with continued success. Um, who would have thought that uh, a lead vocalist would be the drummer as well? Because that's weird because, you know, usually the drummer's like hiding right, back, back, doing his thing as the backbone of the band. Um, their night studio album and then there were three contained the band's first major hit, Follow You, Follow Me, which I love. Uh, the next five albums were also successful. With between 100 million and 150 million albums sold worldwide, Genesis are one of the world's best-selling music artists. Um, th there's a, uh, if you see, there's a, uh, I don't know if it's a behind the music or something about with Phil Collins. It's really, you go, it's one of those things you go, oh my God. The this guy and this band had so many big songs. Mm -hmm. I mean, huge, huge. Yeah. And again, this is a th thing where, 
Phil Collins kind of took them where Peter Gabriel couldn't take couldn't them. Couldn't do it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Now, Peter went on to be hugely successful as a solo artist in mm-hmm. his own right. Oh, yeah, for um, sure. But he, you know, Phil was able to do something that Peter Gabriel couldn't do. Um, I do love, I love that in uh, in between period with songs like Abacab and stuff like that mm-hmm. that are, you know, they're, they're leaning, they're starting to get more in a pop direction, but they still got some of that long form, like Abacab's a real long song, it's like seven minutes or something like that, yeah. you know. Um, uh, <laughs> you know, when they were still kind of in that in between period, I think that that's a really fun period. But they did, there's so many great Genesis songs. They're just they're really quality stuff. I find there's a lot of those on my phone, iPod. <laughs> because I have downloaded so many just because mm-hmm. I've like listened to them randomly and I think I probably have more of those songs that I have Aerosmith on my phone which is hysterical yeah. and um, and then of course Phil Collins goes on to have a giant solo career but never leaves Genesis they, then Genesis right. get back together yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, a Genesis that's they want to do something and, <laughs> yeah let's do it you know, and, and they were like and they never like they ne- were never pissy about it because uh, Mike Rutherford went and did Mike and the Mechanics mm-hmm. with the dude from mm-hmm. Paul Carrick from uh, Squeeze and they had a big record. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know I mean? Everybody had big records. Sure. You know, because, well, I mean, that just goes to show you, like, that's talent. Yeah. These are guys that, like, know how to write songs. They know what the hell they're doing. Um, You know, and it was it was a different era. But 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 nonetheless, you know, yeah, that's a great pick, uh, Lily Phil. Yes. Uh, Peter Gabriel uh, and then Phil Collins. That's, I love me some Genesis. Yeah. Yes. No, that, that, that's, a, that's a really good one. Um, Is there anyone specific you want to talk about that? Did, I... did you want to talk about Pink Floyd? Oh. I, I have Pink Floyd. Let's let's wrap up with some Pink Floyd. Okay. For Fran Crasher, we know how much he loves Pink Floyd. <laughs> Pink, he Floyd. Hates Pink Floyd. This is for Michael Gold. <laughs> Earned early distinction. Oh, he hates, like anytime I post what? anything about Pink Floyd, really? he's mad. He, yeah, yeah, he gets oh, like this. No. Off, like yeah, and then he, yeah. Wow. Earned yeah, early distinction Floyd. as a late '60s psychedelic pop outfit, masterminded by Sid Barrett, mm-hmm. driving force behind the band with the Piper. Uh, in December 1967, reaching a crisis point with Barrett, Pink Floyd added guitarist David Gilmore as the fifth member. Gilmore had, had already known Barrett. He studied with him uh, at Cambridge um, in the early 60s, and the two had performed at, like, lunch times together, doing, like, harmonica and guitars and, you know, what boys do at lunch at school, I suppose. I don't know. Uh, harmonica. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Morrison's assistant, Steve Works set Gilmore up in a room at Works house with a salary of 30 pounds per week, which would be 500 pounds in 2019. Um, in January 68, Black Hill Enterprises announced Gilmore as the band's newest member, intending to continue with Barrett as a non-performing songwriter, because he was, like, whew, losing yeah, his mind. Just a little. Um, according to Jenner, the group planned that Gilmore would cover for Barrett's ec- eccentricities. Um, when this proved unworkable, it was decided that Barrett would just write material. Um, in an expression of his frustration, Barrett, who was expected to write additional hits to follow up Arnold Lane and see Emily play, insist, uh, instead introduced Have You Got It Yet? to the band, intentionally changing the structure on each performance so as to make it the song impossible to follow and learn so the other band members couldn't deal with it. <laughs> no, and then it gets Passive here. aggressive. No, 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 Just no, no. You might think it would repeat here, but no, now we go to a key of E flat. <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. Now there's a diminish on the, the seventh and, you know, just like... Continually, like, okay. Working with, fired. <laughs> working with Barrett eventually proved too difficult and matters came to a conclusion. In January, while, while en route to a performance in Southampton, when a band member asked if they should collect Barrett, according to Gilmore, the answer was, nah, let's not bother. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a pain in the ass. Do you want me to pick him up? No. Nah. Signaling the end of Barrett's tenure with yeah. Pink Floyd. Uh, w- Waters later said he was our friend, but most of the time we just wanted to strangle him. In March of 68, Pink Floyd met with business partner Jenner and King to discuss the band's future, and Barrett agreed to leave. Uh, this version of Pink Floyd would meddle with all sorts of sonic experience before hitting gold with The Dark Side of the Moon, mm-hmm. and other progressive rock epics spilled out the rest of the band's remarkable 70s runs. So, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> Poor Sid. They, they, Sid's they, sitting there on his couch waiting for the limo. <laughs> he's still waiting. Who the fuck are he you? might be. No. Yeah, he might. <laughs> he, he's he's watching Emily play. <laughs> um, it is so. It's such a crazy story, you know. Every time I think of Sing, Sid Barrett, I think about that line from the from uh, A Day in the Life. He blew his mind out in a car. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Basically, you know. I mean, this is a guy that just like he just he just was like he was out there, and then drugs. You know, helped him go get really out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he lost. The, the other guy like that was Peter Green. Yeah, you know, which which made me think of we could have talked about Fleetwood, Fleetwood Mac. Mac. Yeah, Easy. yeah, yeah. You know, those guys had multiple. There's the there's the Peter Green Fleetwood Mac. There's mm-hmm. the um, 
uh, uh, Bob Welsh, Fleetwood right. Mac, with that they had they had a big record, yeah. and then of course the Lindsay, Lindsay yeah. Buckingham, Lindsay Knicks, Buckingham uh, Knicks uh, yeah, yeah. stuff. Uh, isn't it interesting that every time they get rid of Lindsay Buckingham, they can't do shit? <laughs> <laughs> no matter who they isn't that they something you know they got Mike Campbell in yeah, the band yeah Mike now, Campbell is, and he's good but they have to bring another guitar player in because Mike so, can't yeah. play all the stuff yeah he, right. every time they do that when they they did that in the uh, they did that for a brief period in the 80s yeah, and the, you know what they needed two guitar players to, mm. every time they got to get two guitar players because nobody can handle him because yeah. he's because he's a freaking <laughs> monster. monster yeah I mean, there, that, that should tell you everything about what a guitar player Lindsey Buckingham is. Yep. If he leaves the band, you have to get two guys because it's not going to work. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but in any case, so, so Fleetwood Mac would have been another one. Um, Pink Floyd, what can I say? I mean, that you know, they definitely would never have been like comfortably numb and all that stuff. Uh, with uh, Sid Barrett, that he was no, not, he, not was, he was lost writer. in space. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he would never, you know. So. Um, this turned into, you know, you know, they they were able to go into uh, their their the next phase, uh, you know, without him, you know. So you know, the, the minus his craziness. But uh, yeah, guys, um, very cool stuff. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Any more comments before I move on to the last couple things I want to go over? Michael Golds. Sid frying his mind is what made Pink Floyd the band they were in the 70s. Most everything, everything Pink Floyd did after Gilmore joined the band is basically Waters dealing with the loss of his friend. Right. And that yeah, that's all. a good point. <laughs> yeah, thank yep. you for adding that, Mike. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. That was that was the that was like like big on their minds. Oh, Bon Scott rules by Todd Kane. Tracy Sampson's watching. Cool. And there's some relationship stuff that I'm not reading. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Metallica fired Dave Mustaine before they were even famous. Yeah, I had. I had them on there too, but that was a very small section. <laughs> well, I mean, you think too, um, you know, the Rolling Stones, you know, bringing um, uh, uh, Ronnie Wood mm-hmm. in, um, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, you know, so so there's there, there there's times where that, you know, the, you just got to make a change, you know, and it and it works really really well because you, you know, the you trust your instincts on stuff like that. Um, so a couple of uh, things here real quick. Uh, go to Ludini rock and roll circus.com. Uh, go to Wolf's customs dot online and go to rock rage radio.com and download the app. Do all the, do all those things. All the things. Oh, oh, yeah. Every single one. I'm going to hold my breath until you do. No, I'm not <gasps> going to do that. Yeah. So, <coughs> so <laughs> maybe um, not. Uh, speaking of the Beatles. Beatles. They there and I don't know if, if anybody out there in podcast land has watched this yet. It's long. It's like six hours. It's a it's a three part series on Disney Plus, and it is the uh, it's basically kind of like the last or one of the last things the Beatles like really ever did. Mm-hmm. And um, they were they had something like three weeks to write fourteen songs, record them, and go play a gig with playing all these new songs. Right. And um, this is them. In the studio, working, you know, trying to write these songs, and the little conversations, the little—I mean, they, they, the, Peter Jackson is really should get an Academy Award for this because he went and remastered all this, digitized all the, the. When you look at the video, it's not grainy. It looks really? like it was shot. I was yesterday. wondering how it would look. Yeah, now, it looks amazing. Is it color or black and white? Oh, it's a color. And it is, is it like, really? It okay. is like it's like high definition it's like insane oh, wow. <clears throat> and um you can see the hairs right up john lennon's nose but um wow magic there are there's just all these magic moments of these songs and you you hear them kind of just noodling around and, Wait, that, that's the that's, long and winding road exactly right like and he's just like dun, dun. no and he's changing no that that's not the right chord oh there it is and then it's like the long winding road you're like what yeah. wow. and that's just see that's what these guys did it was their day job was to go into studio and write songs. Write songs, yeah. So you got it, and and here's here's the, here's the real kick in the pants. None of them were thirty. Oh boy. Whoa. George Harrison was twenty six years old when the Beatles broke up. Holy cow! I mean, that's insane. That's how. That's what. That's what like monster musicians these guys were. Um, also, you start to re- realize what a great uh, piano player both jo- uh, Paul uh, McCartney is and John Lennon. Hmm. Both really good. They both mm-hmm. sit, there's both the segments of them sitting down at the piano writing stuff, and it's just absolutely amazing. Um, there is tons and tons of goofing off. Like of singing songs and stupid I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. voices, and like they these guys have so much musical knowledge 
because they had played in clubs, they had to play mm-hmm. all kind of songs and everything, and they just would burst into like you know some folky, skiffly kind of thing, and then they'd play, you know, just give me that rock and roll, right, you know, right. you know, and they would just like this just, just to just to kind of blow off steam, and uh, the whole time they're coming up with uh, with stuff, and it's all very intimate. And then it builds as they go because they start complaining about the sound. They're like, "This sucks. Can we get better microphones?" And yeah. they pretty soon they bring a PA system in. And it's bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, the uh, but I've only seen the first episode. It's very long. It is also primarily for music nerds. So if you're a music nerd like we are, or a Beatles lover, maybe or Beatles lover, mm-hmm. like you know, you're gonna be like really, you're gonna be like just really fascinated with it. Um, you can kind of like. It's so dense that like you can kind of watch some of it, kind of half watching it, and like I yeah. was changing strings on guitars and everything while I had it on, you know, um, because it isn't like a hardcore like narrative. It's literally like the cameras on, and you're just kind of it's like a kind of voyeuristic kind of thing. You're right. kind of just right. like like eavesdrop eavesdropping, you know, mm-hmm. while they're while they're doing their thing and just kind of spying on what they're doing. It's very very cool. Yoko Ono is is in it. Um, oh, she is. Linda, yeah. Linda, Linda, Linda. Is Linda in there too? She's yeah. in it. She's not married to Paul yet. She's their photographer, mm-hmm. and she's wow. in there taking pictures and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, Yoko is very well behaved <laughs> at this, at this the whole, point. At the whole yeah. time, there is a really funny scene at the end, and I, 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 I mean, this is spoiler alert. Um, but I think this is knowledge. Everybody knows that, like, all of them may quit the band at one point or another. Right, right. And this was George Harrison's turn. Is that when he just yeah, like? He got pissed and it was off very him. civil, wasn't it? Yeah. It just, was like fuck just, you guys. It was just like. I'm leaving. Yeah, <laughs> that was, and, that was uh, it. Like, oh, has, yeah. has George left? <laughs> yeah, like well, he wrote in his he, he wrote in his diary but, something like, you know, uh, went down to the pub and had some biscuits and uh, <laughs> quit the Beatles. I kind of wish like I something was like that, that easy going. But um, <laughs> but when when they, they don't know what to do, so they get back and they get like they come back every lunch and George isn't there, so they just start screwing around. Right, and Yoko gets on the microphone oh, and starts going. Yeah, 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 and of they're just laughing does. and being goofy because they, they have no idea that's what's to come. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> that's like, my whole brain. No well, I think like when you see her there, and the, nobody seems the lightest bit encumbered by her. Well, see, like not at all. Like she doesn't talk. She's she's just kind of sitting there, and um, I think it kind of I think it kind of goes to like this thing that like Yoko Ono broke up the Beatles is a very is a, is a fallacy I mean for, right. if when you look at this like she's like okay I I know it's, it sounds kind of sexist when I say well behaved but I mean I just mean that she's not like you know saying like nah, you she's, not yeah, she's, like, she's, she's not Janine yeah she's not Janine she's not giving her input not your she wife. on what the band should be doing this is John's yeah. band yeah. and they've done just great without her input and she doesn't really yeah. need to get in on any of that um well, there was uh, I, I listened to some interviews with Paul regarding this um, uh, this uh, series, and he was really worried that it would come off that he broke up the band, hmm. you know. And Peter Jackson's like, "Let me just let me just go through it." And then after it was all done, Pete um, texted him and said, "I think you're going to be really happy with this." And Paul was. He goes, "No, it was just a four blokes, you know, four blokes having a good time," and he was very pleased and, with well, it. Well, I mean, that's the thing you see, other than. Like and especially when George Harrison quits, it isn't even like a big thing, mm-hmm. and you're kind of like, well, well, well what? You know, because there's it's yeah. not like American bands that like you know, yeah, fuck, I you hate asshole. you, yeah, you know what I mean, you know, smash, I'm and taking shit. my mic, you know what I mean, yeah, <laughs> they're British, gentlemen. and this is my this is my cord, and I'm taking it off. These are yeah, my exactly. mic cables, yeah, 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 exactly, right. So there's there's like none of that going on, yeah. um, at I'm all. Looking forward but, to seeing um, that. There's a, there's a lot of funny. <laughs> There's a lot of there's a lot of humor in it. These guys were just like four dudes just scrolling around, and because they wrote even songs though, all day, they got really yeah, good. At even it, though know? they were basically breaking up, this this was it for them. They were still um, friends. What 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 I heard was that um, the, 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 because after that they they went back and re re recorded the songs for the what would, what became the album called Abbey Road. And um, that Paul McCartney was being a real stickler about not wanting to do a lot of overdubs. He wanted to get all the performances right. Mm-hmm. And that was so tense. They got really frustrated. That that's yeah. where they were kind of like, Paul's right. going to be like this. We kind of don't yeah, want to yeah. do this. Um, but um, if you get a chance, check it out. It's 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 really interesting. Um, so I wanted to throw that one at you guys. Also, I saw Ghostbusters Afterlife. Yes, we all did. We all did. So yes. let's go around in a in a sentence or so, kind of say what you thought. Uh, Pittsburgh Gavin. I uh, heard a review of it. The reviewer did not like it because he thought it wasn't in the same vein 
as the original Ghostbusters, meaning the campy 80s. And it wasn't. It was much better. I think it had a lot of humor in it, uh, but I think it had kind of a more mature side to it, too. Yeah. So I highly recommend it. If you love the first Ghostbusters, not the remake with the... uh, the female actors. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with not that. that. Not that. Not that there's anything not wrong. There's anything. With that. I love Christian <laughs> Wig. I love uh, you know. You love all girls. the ladies. I love all we the know. ladies. But I love me some ladies. I do love me some ladies, and but I think that this was. I highly recommend it. If you love the originals, please go see this. Lily. I also loved this movie for all the little Easter eggs that were in it. So yes. watch out for stuff like that. And um, I'm already. Sort of in like a downer type of mood, and it kind of made me weepy towards some parts. Oh. So I was just like, I started to me tear too. up like a jerk, but I did love it. I do recommend it. It, it, I think it does it justice for yes. the whole um, for the whole franchise. I, I think that they did it the right way, mm-hmm. and um, the new characters are really likable. Yeah, they're really believable. Um, you're really like you're really with them. You're you really get you really get into it with them. Um. And the way that they, what they did with the older characters, the way they, you know, kind of paid, you know, yeah, where like the way they just kind of, it was yeah. just the way they brought them into the story. They did it right. Was done yes. in a really, yes. in a really cool way. Um, and you must watch all the credits. All the way to yes. the end. Yeah, all yeah the wait till to all the way to the end. I yeah. didn't see the very end. Oh, there's more. Oh, there's more. There's more. Yes. But in any yeah. case, in any case, there is a mid-credit thing that happens. Right. Because it, it goes, they, they say certain person's name is in the movie. I'm and like, you're like, wait a minute. I'm I didn't know like, yeah, that person. Like, like, and that like, person oh, in there? And that person shows up. In the part part way through the credits. That was great. There is way to the very end of the credits. I'm going to have to go see it again now. Right. I will say that I thought that it dragged in a few places. I wanted it them to tend to kind of get the stuff a little bit quicker i did i thought i thought the movie i think you could have like removed 10 minutes um and it would have been a lot tighter mm-hmm. i kind of know where you're going with that yep. which, which uh, but but it was it was cool it, it, yeah it was great paul, paul rudd oh my god oh, i love sure. him like he oh, like who sure doesn't like know. paul rudd he's good in he everything was, yeah, he's just like a he just looks like the most likable dude and I he's, him, he's obviously drank from the fountain of youth as well yeah yeah what, what is he like 75 years old now he still looks like he seems like it yeah i mean i remember him in clueless yeah. hello oh my gosh that's right 110 years ago wow <laughs> oh my god um so i let's just get a quick quick look here uh happy birthday to the uh the, the speaking of guys that like invented their own style and people call it their style, Merle Travis. Happy birthday Merle. to Merle Travis. There you go. There is a thing there's actually he invented Travis picking, which you study as a guitar player, especially if you play country or bluegrass. It's called Travis picking. And uh, actually anytime anybody refers to playing with the pick and the fingers at the sim- simultaneously, a lot of people refer to it just as Travis uh-huh. picking. Oh. Uh blues uh like like the godfather of British blues, John Mayall was born in say nineteen thirty three. Um, it feels so good today. You know why? Why is that? Because it's Chuck Mangione's birthday. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god! There we go. (laughs) Denny Doherty from the Mamas and the Papas. Wow. Um, Twink was born in the stand nineteen forty four. Who? Twink. The Pink Fairies. (laughs) Punk. Oh, okay. Ronnie Montrose. We, spoke, we mentioned oh, Ronnie Montrose oh, wow. uh, was born this day uh, oh. in 1947. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, oh, Jennifer Baton, Batten, Baton, 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 ba- who played with Baton? Michael Jackson yeah, yeah. for many years, uh, was born this day uh, in 1957. Wow. It was a long ass time ago. Okay. Yeah, okay. Anybody else we need to really talk about? here no nope yeah no, i'll teach no. him i'm sorry also it's basically my 40th birthday in a month so you guys can send gifts money start alcohol. sending the gifts now yeah <laughs> uh, lily what's what's your show again hot Lakes with lily six on rock rage radio it is thursday 6 p.m eastern time you can download the app for free or just go to rockrageradio.com um ludini rock and roll circus.com uh go there uh check out uh, all kind of cool stuff all the, our archives and uh, and cool things are there uh, bios as well as merchandise um all the stuff is there and wolf's customs dot online 
Check them out for uh, custom artwork done on your musical instrument. Guys, it was a lot of fun today. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm glad it was fun to talk about some of these uh, uh, um, other, uh, you know, th- these these bands and to kind of think about like, wow, you know, especially Genesis, you know. This like, was oh, a yeah. fun topic. That was a good one. Yeah, this was a really fun. fun topic. I'm sure that those of you out there you in, at home, you have your own that you love. Um, in any case, we don't really care what you think. No. Because we, we're, it's a no, joke. It's, it's a joke. The, oh, my Lou, God. Lou, Lou, no, we do I'm, care. I, I'm, yeah. I don't care. <laughs> Lily doesn't, but me and Lou do. I'm just going to go ahead and cancel myself. Okay, guys. Thank you, <laughs> thank you guys so much for listening. We'll catch you all on the next Ludini Rock and Roll See Circus. Ya.